Welcome everyone to this week's Skippy Guide at Zanvort. Now, this is another track that I do like quite a lot. Uh, it's very fun in the Skippy. There's a lot of undulations up and down, very hilly track. So let me show you the stats that we've got at the moment. So we will show you the weather. It's quite a cool track. I, I presume the race is going to be in the evening, um, which is going to help uh, engine power, not so much tire temp. And this is our fastest lap right down here, a 153.915. Now, I did make two mistakes on this lap. As you can see, I almost topped it off um, a bit quicker on the 24th lap. And you can see I did a two uh, 53.9s here. So I was getting quicker, but I did make a mistake on this lap, which I will point out two mistakes actually. And it did cost us a couple of tenths. My um, optimum lap time is a 53 on this session which i will show on the screen right about now uh is a 53 5 something or 53 6 something so i've definitely got a few more tents to find um but i'll show you this lap anyway so we will press the magic button and get rid of the rev cam and uh meet you in the cockpit coming into turn one right then down at turn one and this is gonna be quite a long video quite repetitive because some of the corners are repeats of other corners as in how you take them my biggest thing for this uh, track is uh, pretend you're you're delicately painting something and that sort of general brush stroke across the canvas is that's kind of what i want you to picture as you're going around this track some of the corners are very smooth very long uh, and basically smoothness is key here and and guiding the car into the corner so with that said Turn one, we've got a lovely, let's skip a few, uh, forward a few frames. We've got a lovely great big marker here across the track in, as in a white line. So it's brilliant, it's really helpful. With the first few laps, I'm breaking at the line as the tires cross it and it disappears from view. But after it, uh, after the tires are a little bit warm, we're breaking kind of a car length after it, just before the 50 board, we're fully on the brake off the power. Obviously, this is coming off the start finish straight. We're in fifth gear and we change all the way down into first, but only momentarily. So I'm starting to bring the car in and brake in while I'm doing it. And I'm changing to first just to get the car rotating well mid corner. And about this point, the car is responding, um, turning quite well. So I'm changing to second because if we stay in first, we're kind of hitting the rev limiter as we're exiting. So we don't want to have to lift off the throttle to change gear when we're in an acceleration zone. So there's a few corners like this around here. And to me, it seems better changing second, be full power all the way out. As you can see here, we're building the power and we're all the way out. Don't hit the curb. So this is one of the corners where if you run sort of a mid, a car width away from the curb, don't worry about it. It will probably help you to brake a bit later and take the corner a bit wide and have a late apex because you'll, it means you'll avoid the curb. So as I say, we're coming in, nice straight braking, minus the angle to get us into the corner, all the way down into first gear, we're still deaccelerating, and as the car turns in and we're starting to get that grip, we're changing into second and getting on that full throttle without hitting the inside curb. You don't want to hit that curb, they are massively high, they will upset the car, you will run wide. And as you can see, we don't have a lot of gravel trap on the left-hand side of the track. On to turn two. So we've pulled out a little bit on the right hand side. There's no point going all the way over here. You're just making the track longer, but we're just coming out a little touch just to bring our braking zone in a straight line. Now we're in fourth gear, we're braking, we're dropping down into third, turning the car in. And again, we want to avoid this curb. It is very high, it will send you wide, and we've got even less runoff area because we've got a nice big barrier over here, which will come and greet us if we do hit the curb. So breaking point for me is just as the curb kind of gets a car length ahead of us and we're kind of kind of brushing on the brake ever so slightly. We're not very hard on the brake, losing a little bit, maybe 10 to 12 miles an hour, rolling the car in in third, getting on the power as early as we can. And this is where I compromise my exit on the left-hand side here to benefit turn three, which is one of two most important corners on the track. Turn three actually is, after this, is full throttle all, all the way through the S's until turn six. So it's a long way that if we can gain a few mile an hour, it will benefit us greatly. So 
right hand side of the track we're coming into turn three and my braking point you can't really see it but it's as the curb on the inside becomes visible so it's a it's a risen curb as always around here there's a lot of high curbs avoid them again and it's just as i can see it on the left hand side there it's very awkward so let's go back a little bit so that's when i actually come on the brakes about here so if you can pick a marker for yourselves around here um be my guest but that's mine just as i can see the top of the curb as we're doing it we're breaking in a straight line as much as we can down into first gear and i want you to watch the car behaves compared to the steering wheel because we're under steering under steering under steering and about this point it starts turning now when the car starts turning it's because of the compression of this because you're coming down into the hairpin and then back out again so we want to use that to advantage and get a nice late apex without hitting the curb again because it's massively high and i want to change into second at this point because again like turn one we want to be full throttle on the acceleration row this one is uphill so it's an added if we lift off we're going to lose a little bit of momentum that we don't want to lose so into second avoid the curb nicely on the steering start to unwind the steering as we're coming through and we're powering out full throttle and using a little bit of curb on the outside we don't have a lot of runoff it is all grass a real pain in the rear that corner but as i say if you get that corner right you're gonna have a really good opportunity to overtake someone down this straight um it's not a straight really but it's full throttle so this isn't a turn don't worry about it but it does have an importance because as you can see there look at the throttle we are early shifting into fourth reason being this bit's downhill so if i have to lift off and change into fourth downhill i'm not only losing straight line speed because this is gravity is helping us here so why not have the engine and gravity pushing us down this hill to me it just makes more sense makes the car accelerate a bit quicker down the hill get that one or two mile an hour uh, up on other people so let's fast forward through turn five because well that's turn four sorry this is turn five completely ignore it because it's full throttle and we're over to turn six turn six is very tricky on cold tires and if you take too much speed into the here um hint hint that's what i do um you will get a crummy exit and you'll lose a bag of time so let's fast forward it a little bit so just as you get to this tarmac section here on the left hand side just as it passes us we're on the brake and we're down into fourth because i do manage to get up into fifth there so we're down to fourth and this is my this is perfect until i stay on the brake so you want to kind of begin the turn whilst braking you want to bring it down to probably about 95 90 miles an hour and this is my problem that i'm still braking and i'm too far into the corner and i get a lovely snap of oversteer and then a big snap of oversteer right there so that's where we've lost maybe a tenth tenth and a half but my line through the corner isn't too bad i'm probably a little bit close here so you want a nice smooth line all the way around and you want a nice late apex about here so you want to be next to the curb not on it it's too bumpy um, but you want to be full throttle as soon as you can around here and you don't want to be running too wide if you apex too early you will run wide so you want a nice late apex around here and give you a nice sort of open up the steering and give you a nice exit right about here as i say not much runoff we've got grass and gravel and barrier that is coming back to the track so if you're on here and you're not turning you are going to hit this bit of the barrier which is not going to be good so i'll play that through at that speed just so you can see kind of where my car's positioning and oversteering again it's because i'm on the brake i'm dragging the brake too much that's all it was didn't brake hard enough on the way into it but i'm staying nice and tight to this inside line which is what you want as the car settles down i'm on full throttle and really i should be doing you know a couple of mile an hour more than what i should be doing at this moment in time right on to turn seven so this little kink in the track just here just as it goes angle and then straight that is kind of as it gets to the front of the car around here we're braking we're in fourth gear still we're braking down uh no sorry we're not uh i'll get my teeth in in a minute we're braking and we are not changing down we are staying in fourth gear 
This is one of them corners you definitely got to be easy with the car. Get the braking done before the corner and power over and through the corner. So braking, getting the car turned in, off the brakes, full power coming in, little touch of oversteer, that's probably because the rear tires are hot, and that's what actually pushes us wide there. Otherwise, we're on a trajectory to basically cut this corner as much as we can. It's quite a flat curb. Uh, there are some of them on this circuit, but not many of them. We can cut this quite heavily, and you want to be full throttle before it to try and keep that rear uh, end of the skippy in check. So I say we're coming in, off the brake. We should be aiming to smash that curb, but because of that slight oversteer, we just graze it, and that is what pushes us wide on the exit. So you can see there, I have a slight lift. Slight lift there, and I'm still not on full power. I should be on full power a few seconds ago. And this is what pushes us wide, and that was my second mistake. So that maybe cost us half a tenth right there. A little bit annoying, but as I say, pushing the car, I'm just asking the car to do a little bit too much. Rear tyres are probably a little bit warm from my last uh, little skid in turn six. So we'll gloss over that. Still a quick lap, um, but could have been quicker, could have been better. Turn seven now is a wonderful corner, because as we're rolling in, we're coming all the way down. We're in fourth gear, haven't changed down yet. We're changing all the way into second, but we're getting a lot of the braking done before the corner. And then we're dragging the brake quite heavily all the way through. A little bit of throttle to balance the car. And then once we hook up with that curb, we want to get off the brake and on the power. Now, don't run too wide because if you're coming all the way here, you just got further to travel. It's not very long straight and you're not going to gain the advantage by running wide and carrying one or two mile an hour more. That was a windscreen tear off I just took there. So it's not a graphical glitch with the sun. But yeah, don't run too wide over here. If you can, it's not the end of the world, but the quickest way is the most direct way. So coming into turn nine, now this is deceptively tight. We're changing up into third and we're heading for this orange barrier. And just as we kind of need to straighten the car, uh, I kind of increase the angle here to get most of the turning done in this area of the track. So I can get a straighter line on exit. So we're turning the car, getting it level with the track, braking, just as we kind of get into contact with this little bit, it's kind of a car's length ahead. Braking down into third and still rolling the brake on while rolling the car in. And now we're off the brake and we're letting the car balance with the throttle. See the speed? It's quite consistent. Now we've met up with the apex, nice light apex as usual. And we're accelerating and we're unrolling the steering because you can, there's a little bit curve here, don't use too much. A lot of people, wrong button, a lot of people will seem to stay really close to this inside and I find it really compromises their exit. So if you get this corner right, you'll be taking, a, I would say a good three to five mile an hour more down this straight and it will give you a great, great overtaking opportunity into turn 10. Turn 10 is very heavy braking. You can definitely squeeze up the inside of someone there and definitely uh, go around the outside because turn 11 is a left-hander. So if you can stick to the outside of turn 10, you'll have the inside on turn 11. Talking about turn 10, let's go down to it. We've got a lovely nice brake marker here of the barriers. Now we're in uh, barriers, curbs. So we're in fifth gear and as the curbs come under the nose, we are braking really heavily down into second. Now as the barrier, as the curl on the curbs finish, we're rolling the car in and we're in second gear and you can take quite a lot of this curb but don't take too much don't be tempted because there is a slowdown here so if you do take too much uh, be warned it's going to be a slowdown and it's going to be costly because this straight over here is not very long and you're kind of going to need to take it before turn 12 because it is a pain in the ass to get rid of it on the start finish straight anyway turn 10 we take a good amount of curb like that and now we're changing down into first as we're braking so there we go brake down into first the reason i seem to like coming in there in second is the car is seems a bit faster and then as we're changing gear i feel like it settles the car in a straight line and then we're getting that snap of changing down into first gear to get the car rotating we do take a little bit of the curb here you can run over here but it's very very bumpy so i don't see any gain from it really 
we're changing into second right about here and then we're full power all the way out onto the curb unwinding the steering don't run too far wide because again it's not a very big curb so i will run that all the way through like this because then you can see what the car is doing nice slow motion get the car turned in cut some of the curb back on the power to give us a little bit of acceleration as we sort of go down the dip brake into first then roll the car in nicely bring in the power you'll feel the steering grip because we're under compression again slightly change into second just on the exit because you'll be running out of revs at this point and then just roll the car out onto the exit curb sorted down to turn 12. i hope you can see it on camera but there is a bump right about there and we want to turn in before that so we're in fourth gear we're braking just as this little dirt patch here becomes uh, you know just in front of the car we're sl kind of uh pecking at the brake i suppose it would be the best thing just kind of giving it a jab staying on it slightly changing down into third and we take an almighty amount of curb on the inside so you really want to run the car really four wheels all on the curb and you want to get on the power as early as possible because this is the most important corner so turn three was the second this is the most important so as you can see here full throttle before the apex of turn 12 that's going to lead us all the way down the start finish straight and straight into turn one it's going to get us a bag of time if you get a good run here it's going to be an easy overtake you're going to get it done before turn one don't run too wide here uh, because there is a gravel trap and it will compromise your exit speed change up into fourth and we're coming into turn 13 now and this is a corner it's flat out but you don't want to turn the wheel too much you want to be as smooth and crystal clear with the car as possible and what i mean by that is don't hit the curbs don't upset the car it's gripping around the tarmac if you start hitting bumps the car will uh, move its load around all over the place and not be very happy super smooth super crisp don't run too far wide it's very bumpy that curve on the left and there's grass there which will compromise your speed down the straight as i say straight is a straight the car does what it does and that's us crossing the line with a 153.915 so i hope i mentioned everything that i can in this video um it's a great little track for the skip barber as have they all been to be honest so far this season and it's really really good fun and really rewarding uh, rewarding I, I will speak english one day um when you get it right and when you get this you know the, the skippy dialed in it's really really nice as always set up in the description and i will catch you on the next one cheers guys bye bye